ladies. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, Carlton, just what's uh, what's impressed you just about Noah Pierre in particular? What he's been able to do, you know, stepping into uh, that spot when he's had to play some corner, and um, just what stood out to you just so far? Um, um, probably the word is resiliency. Uh, he played safety two months ago. He played Husky star. He's played money. And then three weeks ago, you asked him to play corner. And then he goes in the game and plays corner versus the second most productive pair of receivers in the Big Ten. And they go after him. They go after him. He just ends up with nine tackles and a big interception at the end to give us a chance to win the game. So <clears throat> the kid's resilient. He's competitive. And I thought his teammates did a great job on the sidelines. If he gave up a play or a pass, and just encouraging him. Uh, and then the kid goes out there and plays like that. So couldn't be more proud of him. And this really tells you, <clears throat> you know, that's the character and core of our team right there, guys like him. So big hats off to him. A guy that was a third string safety and now he's a starting corner, um, you know, versus some pretty good football teams. Yeah, Coach, the front seven of this defense has been pretty consistent as far as, uh, you know, uh, stopping the run and even getting to the quarterback a little bit. How, how much is it going to be important to, you know, maintain that level against an Ohio State team that's, you know, fairly talented on offense? Oh, for sure. I mean, they, they, they do about everything perfect. Uh, run it, throw it, pass it, protect it. But I think when your front seven can give you some, some, some havoc and some negative yardage plays, when they can squeeze gaps and get the ball contained so your, your guys can run to the ball on the perimeter, I think that's huge. And I think, you know, between the D-line, the backers, the apex players, um, we have to continue to find ways to make sure our defense doesn't get split down the middle build edges, and then allow our team uh, speed, hustle, and effort, run balls down inside out. Um, we're a gang tackle team. I don't want a lot of plays where there's one-on-one -on -one tackles there. And so I think the more we can do that and the more we can keep the ball sideways and run it down, the better we'll be. Coach, I know you weren't here last year, but uh, where Indiana's defense had success in that Ohio State game a year ago was being able to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback and make some some poor decisions. Uh, what do you think of your pass rush uh, so far through six games? And what have you seen on film in regards to how much success you can have getting to their quarterback without having to blitz a whole heck of a lot? Uh, I think you have to have balance. I think you got to be able to stop the run. I think you got to be able to stop and contain the run. I think you got to be able to keep a lid on the passes. And then you got to find your spots to pressure. You don't want to be so one-sided where you're doing great on one end, but Every time they hand the ball off, it's a game of 20. You don't want to play so much coverage, um, play so less coverage where they can throw the ball off your head. So balance is what I look for. Um, you got to have calls that you feel good against the run. You got to have calls you feel good at the pass. And then you got to have ways that when you say, you know what, we're going after the quarterback right now. You got to have those ways. So we've tried to be balanced all year, um, which helps keep down the explosive plays, um, what helps you uh, not give up so much in the run game. I think we got to find ways as a great team to have balance in all three areas where when we need to get a negative yardage play, we have ways to do that. When we feel like it's a throwing down, we have ways to help our guys on the perimeter. Um, and then when we got to stop the run, you have ways. So I think you got to have a lot of different ways and different facets to do that. You can't just sell out on, you know, on something every play. So we're going to have to find balance against a great team. I think in the past you've kind of described – defensively that it, at times it's almost more concepts than specific calls and then it's kind of on the guys on the field to apply those concepts to what they see especially Saturday when I think at times it felt like Michigan State was trying to deliberately move very fast to catch you guys in whether it was personnel groupings or not lined up or whatever it was did you feel like you were seeing basically guys very quickly moving through those concepts and, nah. and no I just felt like they <clears throat> they had a very good plan and that's that's on me they had a very good plan especially on third down with substitutions to not let our third down package get on the field something they had not shown. And they went tempo and we sub and we just that, – that's more on me. I got to see that they're going tempo and not try to sub the defense. That's really what that was. It, it had nothing to do with the guys thinking through a concept. It was just we were trying to get a certain personnel group on the field. They didn't sub, so technically they didn't have to let us sub. The referees weren't going to hold the ball. That's more on me from game management standpoint. Coach, what do you see from Micah McFadden that makes him as good as he is in doing multiple things on the football field? Um, it, it, yeah, smart kid. And he plays with a relentless motor. And when you can buy those, you get a guy like him. You know, he studies. He takes extra time in the film room. He comes up and meets with me one-on-one. -on -one. 
He takes notes. Um, and he's a guy that practices the same way he plays. Um, so as a coach, I have to slow him down and practice and take care of him. But when you get to game day, he can see it like a coach on the field. And when he sees it, he knows how to react. He knows how to set a play up. Um, he knows what the strengths and weaknesses of that call going to be versus that formation. They get in this formation, he's eliminated two or three things that he knows they're not going to do so he can play faster. So he's a coach on the field. Um, but I, more than anything, the way he leads our team, uh, the relentless effort he plays with, and you combine that with a really smart kid that studies the game, and you get a guy that can affect the game, run game, pass game, dropping, third down, special teams, that's the kind of player Mike is. You obviously mentioned Ohio State's offense at this point. What, what stands out, though, about just their, their skill guys, you know, especially the receivers with, uh, you know, Wilson and – Everything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're – no, I, I'm joking, but I tell you what, they're, they're well coached. Um, they're great athletic players that are fundamentally sound in catching the ball, route running. Um, their scheme uses tempo. It uses a power run game, a zone run game. It gets their athletes in space. It gets their athletes deep. You combine that with a, um, a, a dual threat at quarterback. Um, so I, I tell you what, they, they've done a really great job of recruiting. Um, and it's not just that, because you can have talent and not use it. Um, they've done a tremendous job of utilizing the tools they have, um, all three receivers, the tight ends, uh, multiple running backs, um, the RPO game. So they, they present you where you got to have a game plan to be able to defend a little bit of it all, pick your spots. Um, and, you know, they're just a well-coached team with really good players. Hey, appreciate it, guys.